Now, the Met Police have conceded there were too few officers in Tottenham on Saturday night. The local MP, David Lammy, says he's been talking to the police about what went wrong. It's not clear to me why the scale of those skirmishes, those burnt out cars, the bus and the other things, seem to be allowed to smoulder and go on for so long. And I have to say, my job is to represent my constituents. And I'm being told by very decent, hard-working people behind me who have their homes burnt out that, look, no one came to us. We were knocking on windows and no one came to us. Where were they? We were terrified in our homes and we saw no one there. Police ran in the opposite direction. And I, you know, it's my job to continue to raise those concerns because that's what my constituents are saying to me. And I put that very forcefully to senior police in the local area, understanding that this is not just down obviously to Haringey police who needed to be supported from Scotland Yard and I suspect needed to be supported quicker than in the end happened. Well, the people who live and work around the Tottenham area will pay the biggest price of the violence. My colleague Ian Woods has been speaking to one woman caught up in the middle of it all. By the time we got out, there was just like smoke bellowing everywhere. It was just absolutely crazy. And then when we ran outside, there was no fire brigade. There were no police to be seen. In fact, when we were looking out of the uh, window about uh, two hours prior, there, were, there was a crowd downstairs and the police drove past them and that dispersed them. They went away and I thought that was the end of it. But then they came back again and the police were nowhere to be found. So they're saying that the police were too scared. If the police were too scared, they could have stayed in their police vans and just gone up and down, up and down, just to disperse them, just to keep them away. If they did that, our flats would be saved. But our flats are just, it's just a shell nap. What have you lost, Pat? Everything. In the clothes. The clothes, I mean, that's all I've got, and that's all that we all have got. Just the clothes that we, we've got nothing. We've got absolutely nothing. So, you know, it's, it's just really, really hard. It's just really, really hard. I mean, Saturday night, we didn't, we didn't know where we were going to stay. Um, we got into my other half's car, and we drove down the road, and the police were about a mile down the road in their van, about 10 of them. My other half stopped the car in front of the police and said, listen, like, um, our building's on fire, our building's on fire. And they just, they didn't bother to do anything. They didn't bother to sort of like, we turned back and they were still in the van. They didn't drive off or anything. We wanted to stay in a hotel. We looked for a hotel. There was no hotel available. So we just stayed in the car. We slept in the car that night. We were in a hotel last night, but we slept in the car that night. Speak to John O'Connor, a former Scotland Yard commander, and in our central London studio is Mark Wadsworth, an activist who worked in communities hit by riots in the 80s and 90s uh, across the country. Mark, to you first of all, if I may, um, your reaction to what happened at the weekend? Well, it's shocking. Um, it's a regrettable that people have lost their homes. I'm very sad about that and the damage to businesses. But what we have to remember that this is the, as Martin Luther King describe the right is the voice of the unheard. And there is high unemployment in the Tottenham area, in Brixton, in other parts of London that were hit. In Tottenham, I think it's uh, 50 people uh, chasing every one job, 10% uh, increase in job seeker allowance from uh, last year. There are a lot of uh, people on the streets without jobs. And there's an old saying, isn't there? A hungry man is an angry man. Uh, as I said, um, John O'Connor is with me here in the studio. I don't know if you can uh, look down the barrel of this camera and, uh, and speak to our, our guest who is standing by in central London, Mark Wadsworth. Voice of the unheard, that's why this happened. Well, Mark, I mean, I, I, I hear, to, hear what you say, but I, I, I can't really see that um, blaming the cut in benefits and blaming the unemployment situation is any excuse for what's happened. And I think that we've always looked for excuses before it's been alleged there was institutional racism. It can't be said now because we look at the makeup of the people that are involved in these demonstrations, they're from all races. So I think the, the, the racism thing goes out the window. The fact that we've got disaffected youth, it's across the board. This is a fact of life. We've got We've got young men going to university, coming up with degrees who can't get jobs. So I think it's, uh, it's not right to try and find blame and try and find excuses in government policies. That's a cop-out. We've got lots of people out there 
on the streets who are prepared to commit these offences have got no conscience whatsoever. They are not part of any community. And that's what makes me laugh when I hear about community leaders speaking on behalf of people. Just because you live somewhere, it doesn't make you part of a community. There's lots of people out there who live very industrious lives and in, in sometimes in poor conditions. We know that uh, as far as the police are concerned, they've looked at certain areas and called them sensitive, too sensitive areas and then they've made them into no-go areas. What does that say about the law-abiding people who live there? We've got to put up with the threats, the threats of violence, the street robberies and all that goes on on a daily basis. And what I have to say that when I hear the Home Office start bleating on about... On. When I hear the Home Office start saying crime's going down, Tell it to these people in these estates who live under these conditions. There's nothing there for them. It's the not, they're the real victims of this. Mr Wadsworth? No, I was just saying, what about the harassment of the youth that's still going on, disproportionately racially po po profiled and uh, stereotyped uh, as criminals? This is not just coming from black voices. This is coming from white voices that saying that there's still a problem on the streets, John, uh, with the way that ordinary uh, but police deal with uh, young black men. You know, it's changed after McPherson. I was a part of the Stephen Lawrence campaign. I helped D Doreen and Neville Lawrence set up the Justice for Stephen campaign, got them introduced to Nelson Mandela. But the situation on the ground, I mean, I experienced it uh, in the early hours of Sunday morning when I used a press card to get through uh, riot police lines. That They were surly, uh, they were rude to me. Uh, and this is now that it's still going on, and this causes flashpoints. I understand that after that peaceful protest outside the police station, a 16-year-old girl was attacked by riot officers uh, or police officers, and that's what sparked this. But, Mark, are you, are you speaking on behalf of the, the perpetrators of these crimes? I mean, are you their spokesman? Because I don't think anybody speaks on their behalf. They don't want anybody to speak on their behalf. They're a lawless bunch. They're there in every walk of life. We see them at the G20 demonstrations. We see them everywhere. They're opportunist thugs who use these opportunities to, to bring shame on the area and I think it's an absolute utter disgrace. It's all very well and very easy to put the police up as the as the scapegoats in the middle. Oh, it's their fault because they represent law and order. A lot of these people are simmering with hatred all the time and it only takes the slightest thing to trigger them off and to trigger the violence. I'm, I'm sorry, I that don't accept... I don't minority, accept this blaming the police the at every turn. That might be a small minority, but that's not the majority. Are you going to say that the students who are protesting over a, a triple increase in student fees are all thugs? That's I'm, not the I case. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The ones I'm calling thugs are the ones who are out there burning and looting. They're the thugs, not the, not the people who try to make something of their lives. There are people out there, as you well know, who are professional criminals, who don't work, will never work, are probably incapable of working. They live on the street, they live through drugs and violence. That's what they do. They're, they're better the organised than they people. used to be. They, pay, they pose a massive threat to law and order in this country, and they pose a massive threat to the law-abiding, peaceful citizens. It's That's an not absolute... the vast majority. I'm the sorry? reality is, if we want to find a solution, we now need to go forward beyond the condemnations, the uh, sort of... Um, but you're uh, condemning the police. But you're, you're the one who started the condemnation. people like the Home Secretary, Mark, you're uh, even condemning the, local the police. MP, the leader of the council. What are the solutions? The solutions are engagement, that we need to have a... Uh, fair social justice, that we need to have a fair slice of the e economic cake. Look at the nine billion that's being spent on the Olympics, and we're told that these bad images around the world are going to spoil that. You know, but, but Mark, I, I haven't heard you when you're talking about a solution. I haven't heard you talk about uh, more appropriate sentences when people are sentenced for these types of crimes. Surely that's part of the solution, isn't it? Isn't part of the solution to take a lot of these people off the streets? Absolutely. And if we get a fair slice of the, of the pie with the Olympics, I mean, you know, there's going to be well, a big campaign police, how now. How can the police start being involved in giving there's you a, share, you're a, a fair slice of the there's pie? There's going to be a, a, a huge campaign now called the Big Rip-Off. 
And that's what the Olympics are. It looks like no. it's just going to be a white Olympic. I'm sorry, Mr. We want a fair we're slice of the pie. We're off message here, aren't we? We're not really talking about the Olympics just at the moment. We're talking about what's been happening on the streets of London over the last 24, 48 hours. You, um, to some extent, have been criticising the police. We've heard from uh, Mr O'Connor saying that that is inappropriate for you to do that. Uh, perhaps you'd like to respond to that. Of course I criticise people who criminalise uh, young black men like my sons. And I'm very concerned about that. My sons are law-abiding. I've always yeah, taught them to respect who were out authority on the streets, Mr. and to respect were the not. police. With all due respect, you know, if someone's walking down the street struggling to carry a plasma TV away from an electronics store, they're probably not good guys, are they? I don't support that. And I said that at the very beginning. It's regrettable and it uh, fills my heart with sadness, along with the vast majority of people uh, in those communities affected. Which is a reasonable point, isn't it, Mr O'Connor? Well, you know, it, it, I, I'm fed up to the back teeth of every time there's an incident like this, every time there's public disorder, I'm fed up to the back teeth of it being blamed somehow on the police. The police did stop and search. The police are not, are not I mean, as Mark was saying, the police are not polite enough. I mean, my goodness me, they're there dealing with a riot situation and they're not polite. I mean, what does he expect? I mean, does he expect a totally emasculated police force? And after all, it is a police force, and it is there to protect people. It's there to protect lives and property. And they were singularly unable to do that on, on Saturday night simply because the actions of, of a number of rioters by setting fire to buildings prevented them from getting to those buildings. We could have had murders going on there. We could have had people killed in those burning buildings. But what do you say to Trident, that special operation against gun crime and drugs in the black community, is supposed to be there to protect black people, not kill them? And that's what's happened with Mark Duggan. He's ended up dead, shot well, dead well, Mark, by I police. Do, I, I don't think you can talk about that case in any event because nobody knows, apart from the investigators, the, the people that were there, and the Independent Police Complaints Commission, and you know as well as I do that talking about that and, and bringing that up is not going to be at all helpful. You have to wait until the due process of law is, is undergone. You have to wait until there's been a proper professional investigation. Trying to preempt it and trying to, to throw criticism at anybody at this stage, it's just not professional. There are ways of managing the situation, the public relations campaign, and time and time again, Scotland Yard gets it wrong by trying to um, paint the victim, demonise the victim in, in a bad light. That happened with uh, Roger Sylvester saying he was a, a, a crackhead. Uh, the police had to apologise about that. Uh, Cynthia Jarrett, Joy Gardner, uh, and now Mark Duggan. Uh, we'll and this just see. can't continue. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, won't we, as far as uh, Mr Duggan is concerned. Uh, there is an investigation going on at the moment, and generally it does seem that we do eventually get to the truth, even as far as on Charles de Menezes. Of course, we heard what uh, the claims were at the time. Subsequently, there was an inquiry, and, and the truth will out. So we'll have to wait and see what happens as far as Mr Duggan is concerned. His family was certainly making a peaceful protest on Saturday night, and then it was hijacked by people who had nothing but violence and criminality in mind. What is your point? You are addressing that to me or to the... I most uh, certainly am. Commander? I'm asking you to respond to that, sir. Well, I think it's very wrong that families are uh, at tight cast and put in this appalling situation where they have to um, go out there and, and talk about uh, unrest and riots and all the rest of it, when what they're really seeking is justice. I don't think the and family were talking about unrest, though, were they? So just to clarify that. Well, they were that. forced by the media to give a view one way or the other what they thought of it, when the issue here is justice and their son being called a gangster by papers like the Daily Mail and The Sun. Uh, as part of the police agenda, part of that old-fashioned collusion that goes on between uh, media and, and police. Uh, and that really doesn't oh. help. It's just a red rag to a, to oh, a wall. Mr Wadsworth, come on, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about, sir, if you would, is what happened as a result. A young man was killed on Thursday. We will find out how and in what manner. And if someone uh, uh, was involved in criminality, they will subsequently be punished for that. We're, all, we're not talking about that. We, it's, a, it's a tragedy for the family and for the man involved. As far as the riots that became... Uh, uh, basically took over parts of central London and the suburbs of London over the last 48 hours. That cannot be acceptable, surely? 
Well, I've answered that already. So well, if you could just clarify just it for me again, sir. No, I just said that it's very sad and regrettable. I'm not going to repeat what I just said. But some youth but on you the street would say that what happened was a casualty of war, a war against injustice, poverty, against racism that's continuous. And we need an engagement that addresses that Mr. sensibly, of war. rather than well, just it, the it, old this, slogans, this is, law this and order the, right wing this, this slogans. This is the against typical these rhetoric that happens every time there's an incident involving a black person. It doesn't come down to racism. These incidents occur. There are white people that get killed at the hands of police. There are people who go out of their way to provoke police into a shooting in situation. For example, the, 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 uh, the, the, the name of, uh, of uh, shooting uh, suicide by cop, you know, is a known phenomenon. I mean, this happens, it's going to happen because the police are at the front line in dealing with some of the most major incidents that ever occur. Now, of course, sometimes other people are going to get the wrong end of the stick. Sometimes the police are going to get the wrong end of the stick. But to, to try and paint the police as going out with, a, with a, a, an inbred racist agenda is totally wrong. I want to hear Mark Dudden condemn the rioters, condemn the people who set fire to people's houses, condemn those who went out with the sole intention of causing mayhem over the last few days. If he doesn't do that, then I would say that he's not doing his job. Do you feel that you could do that, Mr Wadsworth? He's unfortunately dead, so he can't well, condemn Well, uh, that was a slip of the tongue and, and completely unnecessary to, to pick that up. We're very aware of what Mr O'Connor meant. Uh, Mr Wadsworth, well, would you like to answer well, the question? The police have a licence to kill when it comes to black people. Uh, I was about to make a TV programme about it, but it was uh, blocked. Um, and, uh, you know, these grievances, these concerns have got to be properly addressed in an adult way. Stop the knee-jerk of the condemnations, you know, that are straight out of the script book uh, of politics. Well, I, I, we I, suspect, I suspect we're going to be at opposite ends of the spectrum forever because I would say Disengage. stop the criminals, stop the rioting, stop the arsonists, because before long someone's going to get killed. And that's the priority of the police, is to stop what's going on. Not just to talk about it, to talk to community leaders. They've got to do more. It, and if that means, when it comes to more rapid containment and more rapid controlling of what goes on, that might mean having more equipment. It might mean using plastic bullets. It might mean using water cannon. There's a whole raft of things the police are now going to have to consider because a repeat of what happened on Saturday is just not acceptable. OK, final word from you, Mr Wadsworth. Police manual. Policing can only succeed by consent. And where consent breaks down, then there has to be dialogue. So we need less war war, and we need George or now talking with the young dispossessed, talking with the people who don't feel engaged with civil society, and uh, sharing out social justice and economic and political justice. OK, gentlemen, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. We're out of time. Thank you both very much indeed for your input this afternoon here on Sky News. News at sky.com, 84501. Still to come, uh, Nightmare on Wall Street shares on the...